With the successful launch of the February maintenance update, players rejoiced in having a long-awaited fix to the armor-breaking system. However, for some players, that made them realize that they really don't know how bug armor works in this game. And that is what we are going to cover today. If you've been playing Deep Rock Galactic for any significant amount of time, then you know at the very least that enemy armor is a thing and that there is some kind of way that you can break it. I mean, a lot of weapons can get extra damage against enemy armor, so it has to be important, right? Well, armor can actually be a bit of a complicated system to understand, and admittedly, while doing research for this video, I realized that myself, as well as several other informed people, didn't quite get the full understanding of armor breaking entirely, but knew that it was something to consider. So for today, I'm going to help you understand enemy armor much better, and we're going to do it in three parts. First, we're going to talk about just how exactly armor works and what it actually does for the enemy. Second, we'll cover how you, the player, actually interacts with the enemy armor and how you are able to break or even bypass it. Then finally, we'll talk about the tools that each class has access to that have the ability to break armor easily and see who has the best tools for the job. Spoiler alert, all the driller mains out there may feel a little bit left out after this one. So if you guys are ready, then welcome to the 101 course on armor breaking and its effectiveness in Deep Rock Galactic. By the way, be sure to like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this and help support the channel. I really do appreciate it. So the first thing we need to understand is exactly how armor works in this game and what enemies benefit from it the most. In super simple terms, armor makes the enemies more resistant to damage and in some cases completely immune. To understand this concept fully, we need to address the three types of armor the enemies have. Light, heavy, and unbreakable. Light armor is used by a majority of the smaller enemies that you will encounter. Standard grunts, slashers, most parts of the guards, I'll explain that in a bit, as well as the various spitter variants all have light armor covering them. Now the way this armor works is it simply gives the affected enemy in question a 20% reduction to incoming damage to any area that is not a weak spot. What that means is that if you have armor breaking on your weapon and don't hit an enemy weak spot, then you will simply be doing max amount of damage that you could be doing to that particular location. In my experience, light armor is not the most crucial Thing to be hyper aware of because the enemies that have it are quite weak to begin with, so it's not going to be too much of a problem to handle without taking armor into consideration. That being said, essentially increasing armor breaking power will increase your overall damage to the enemy types in question so long as you are not hitting a weak spot, which in that case it's not really going to matter anyway because the enemy is probably going to die regardless. On the other end of the scale we have heavy armor, which functions a lot differently than its lighter variant. This type of armor completely negates any incoming damage. And for most creatures that use heavy armor, it needs to be physically stripped away in order to deal damage to the flesh underneath. This is done by damaging the plates themselves until they are destroyed. Each plate of heavy armor has a set amount of health that once it reaches zero, the plate will break and the armor will be broken, leaving the enemy vulnerable. In this case, increased armor breaking power allows you to break those plates a lot faster. Remember how I just mentioned that the Glyphid Guard has mostly light armor? Well, that's because those two big plates on his front legs are, well, you guessed it, heavy armor plates. And he's not the only one. The Praetorians, Wardens, Shellback, Mactera Brundles, and specifically the Dreadnought Twins all have this heavy plated armor that needs to be stripped away. This is the style of armor that is a little bit more impactful, at least in my experience. It requires a little bit more awareness and work to actually break, and it affects higher value enemies, which can greatly benefit the team if stripped. Now, before we talk about the the last type of armor, I do want to bring to attention that there is a kind of special in-between armor types that you could consider medium armor that some bugs have that basically functions by having a better damage reduction value than light armor, but doesn't fully negate damage like heavy armor. The reason I don't bring this up is because I think there are only two bugs that have this special type of medium armor in the game, and those are the Shellback Younglings and the Gold Detonators. If somebody is aware of any other bugs that have this special medium armor, let me know down in the comments, but I'm pretty sure these are the only two that have it. And you don't really encounter these two a whole lot, so it's probably not going to come into play too much. That being said, the last type of armor that we have is unbreakable armor, which is exactly what it sounds like. Armor that not only negates all damage like the heavy armor does, but cannot be destroyed no matter how much you throw at it. So you're probably wondering, oh, well, that seems fair. How are we supposed to deal with that? Well, thankfully, only a handful of things in the game actually have unbreakable armor, so it doesn't show up too, too much. Aside from everybody's favorite temper tantrum user, the Oppressor, the only real enemies with unbreakable armor are the other Dreadnought variants. The unbreakable armor is everything around the weak spots that does basically nothing when you try to hit it. So dealing with unbreakable armor doesn't really come up too much with the exception of Oppressors. 
So now that we have a general understanding of how armor works, next is the very important question of how do you break and destroy said armor? Well, the simple answer is that you shoot it. Each weapon has a varying degree of armor breaking power and in turn will be able to break armor at different rates. When looking at your weapons, sometimes you will see an armor breaking percentage stat. Some weapons show it and some weapons don't. If you don't immediately see the armor breaking percentage, then you can safely assume that the weapon has 100% armor breaking or a one times armor damage multiplier. Now, what does that mean? Well, it essentially means that the amount of damage that you would do to a bug's health compared to its armor is a one to one ratio. So if a shot has 20 damage, for example, then it will deal 20 damage to both the health and the armor. If you had, say, a 300% armor breaking percentage or a three times modifier, that same shot that would do 20 damage to the bug's health will now do 60 60 damage to its armor, allowing you to break it quicker. In the case of light armor, this more or less increases the amount of damage you do, and for heavy armor, it allows you to shred those plates much faster. Now that's the simple explanation, but it goes a lot more deeper than that apparently. If you don't believe me, look at all these crazy formulas and calculations for figuring out armor breaking that I really tried my hardest to understand. In short, the only real thing you need to know is the higher that percentage chance, the easier it is to break enemy armor. Now I need to confess something that I have learned from this research that I feel bad about. For the longest time, I thought that the shells on the Dreadnought and the points on the Hive Guard were considered armor and that benefited from the armor breaking. Well, as it turns out, this is actually not the case, and they are considered extra health bars. So armor breaking is really only effective against the twins and is essentially useless on the other two variants. I feel really dumb about this because several times I have mentioned on the channel about how good armor breaking can be for dreadnoughts. And now here I am with the biggest glyphid egg on my face. So I do apologize and I will try to do better going forward from this point on. In any event, now that we know mostly how to break armor, the next question is how strong is the armor in question that needs breaking? And this is where the February maintenance update fixed a lot of things. Before this update, while heavy armor stayed essentially the same no matter what difficulty you were on, light armor actually scaled with the higher difficulty missions. So in high level play, the smaller enemies seem to actually be more durable and stronger than the bigger Praetorians. Now it's consistent across the board that armor in general, whether light or heavy, are stronger at higher hazard levels. Again, the numbers are very technical and I'm not going to bore you with all the calculations. Just know that the higher the hazard level, the harder it will be to crack that Praetorian shell. But one thing that does not take a whole lot of effort to crack is that big red subscribe button. So now that we've gone over what armor is and how it's able to be broken, what tools do the classes have that can utilize armor breaking? How effective are they? And who has the most powerful and efficient forms of armor breaking? Let's start off at the bottom of the barrel with our friend the driller. Sorry driller mains, but you guys just don't really have any practical way to deal with armor. Now yes, I will address the elephant in the room that is the driller's power drills themselves that have a whopping 10,000% armor breaking power, making them technically the most efficient and powerful tool for breaking armor in the game. However, I really don't want to recommend using that for a couple of reasons. One, because your drills would be much more better used in actually traversing and creating tunnels. And two, because the driller doesn't really care about armor in the first place and has plenty of other ways of dealing increased damage. That being said, the only real weapon the driller has that affects armor is his corrosive sludge pump, which has built in increased armor breaking. The sludge's corrosive effects can actually melt the armor completely off of the bug, making the sludge pump actually not a bad choice for armor breaking. But again, the driller doesn't really care about armor. Both his flamethrower and wave cooker completely bypass armor in the first place, making it null and void. And for the cryo cannon, it really doesn't matter because anything that's frozen takes triple damage anyway, which in some cases will make it even more effective than armor shredding. Simply put, the driller doesn't really have any way to deal with armor, but also really doesn't care about armor and just laughs whenever he sees a swarm of Praetorians. Moving down the list, we have the engineer, who is in a bit of a weird position. It's weird because every single weapon the engineer has has some level of improved armor breaking power, but for most of them, it's not really worth taking and I'll try to explain why. First, the Warthog shotgun has extra armor breaking, but it's not really necessary since even with this mod equipped, your overall damage output won't be increased by that much, especially since it shares a tier with increased damage, which is almost always a better option. You can still run it if you want, but there are probably better options out there. The same can be said about the stubby SMG, which for the longest time didn't even have extra armor breaking power, but now it has it as an option in tier four. I still don't think that it's really viable to run, especially considering how much more powerful the stubby can be with a shock and electric 
electric focused build. The Snubby is one of the few weapons to only have a 50% armor breaking percent by default. Anyways, so it's probably not meant to be used in an armor breaking way. Then for the smart rifle, it does technically have a way to increase armor breaking. The only thing is it is specific to one of its overclocks, the armor break module, which makes it so that way if you are fully locked on target, each bullet does an insane 1,250% armor break damage. This is a crazy high number, second only to the driller's power drills. But still, the fact that you need to use your overclock to achieve this is very limiting, especially since you could just run explosive chemical rounds for increased damage or seeker rounds to completely ignore armor altogether. Again, similar to the shotgun, it can be nice, but there are probably other good options out there. The secondaries are a bit of a different story. Starting with the deep core grenade launcher, we need to mention another fix that happened in the February maintenance update. A common issue with the grenade launcher, as well as several other weapons, is that its armor breaking power was only applied to the actual grenade projectile and not the explosion, meaning armor breaking was mainly useless to run on this thing for a long time. Now, while not completely fixed, it is a lot more viable to use, so if you want to run it, you absolutely can. The same can be said about the shard diffractor, which follows a similar line of thinking. Only the beam is affected by the armor breaking power and not the AOE that comes off of it. The shard diffractor is a little bit easier of a time deciding since it's only sharing its armor breaking with one other choice, that being more heat generation. Then lastly, the breach cutter is in a very unique position. This is because while this weapon completely ignores and bypasses armor, it's also very effective at breaking armor. This seems kind of redundant to have a weapon that ignores armor completely and yet also does a lot of damage against it. In any event, the breach cutter is actually pretty good at dealing with armor, so it's probably the engineer's best bet. Moving over to the scout, he has several actually effective ways of dealing with armor. His GK2 rifle has improved armor breaking and is actually viable to use. While it does share a tier with better weak point damage, which is sometimes the better choice, the damage per shot of the GK2 is actually pretty low, and he's able to fling a lot of bullets out very fast. This means he can actually take out heavy armor pretty quickly and deal with Praetorians and Wardens pretty fast without sacrificing too much. The same logic can be applied to the Drac Plasma Carbine. Having a high rate of fire and low per shot damage means you can actually shred armor pretty quickly. The only thing with the Drac is it's sharing its armor breaking mod with the Plasma Splash, which is one of my personal favorites to run, so it can be a hard choice to make for some people. However, neither one of these can match the pure power that is the Scout's M1000 Classic. This thing can delete armor insanely fast which is hard to believe when it only has a default 30% armor breaking power. Well, don't forget about the M1000's ability to use its focusing to deal double damage, which in turn means double armor breaking damage. This makes the M1000 not only great for peeling off heavy armor like it's wet paper, but also deleting grunts and slashers by punching through their light armor with ease. If you're playing the scout and want to lean into the role of being a big game hunter, then the M1000 is the perfect choice. Now, the scout does have one secondary option with armor breaking with his jury rigged boomstick. The boomstick can be okay with armor breaking, but his primaries are much better suited for the task, at least in my opinion, especially considering the boomstick's armor breaking is sharing its tier with blow through rounds, which on the boomstick is extremely good. Ultimately, while viable on the boomstick, you certainly have other alternatives at your disposal. Last, but certainly not least, we have the bullet spewing maniac that is the gunner. If you need someone to rip armor off of those Praetorians, not only is the gunner very well suited for it, but he's probably already doing it as we speak. Not only do all of his primary weapons have the potential to have improved armor breaking, but they are very much viable without compromising the weapons themselves. Starting with the minigun, armor breaking is really good on this thing. While yes, the other two options are very good and tempting and can be used at your discretion, you won't be losing too much by changing to armor breaking. Similar to the scout's GK2, since the per shot damage is very low, but it has an insane rate of fire, you can chew through armor in a very short period of time. For the autocannon, it's an even easier choice and can be even more effective at shredding armor. The only other option in this tier is increased AOE radius, which can be good in certain setups, but I never find myself really needing that much wider AOE too much as the baseline is already pretty good. Finally, the rocket pod is also a pretty easy choice to take, even though it does suffer from the same kind of problem that the grenade launcher has, where the armor breaking only applies to the impact of the projectile instead of the actual explosion. Still, it's very useful since with the rocket pod, you can just steer the rockets directly to where you want them to hit. Ultimately, every primary for the gunner is an armor shredding machine. 
Finally, the gunner does have one secondary weapon with improved armor breaking with his BRT Burst Pistol. However, it's not incredibly needed on it since again, his primaries cover the job incredibly well. Plus, even with extra damage, it feels like you're settling for using this thing instead of wanting to use it naturally. It's just not the kind of tool that you want to use for armor breaking. And there you have it. If you want to break armor like a champ, the gunner and scouts are your best bet. The engineer will help you when he can, and the driller, well, he's probably going to do his own thing anyway. Hopefully now you guys have a much better understanding of how armor works and how you can deal with it a little bit better. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video fun and informative. If you did, be sure to give it a like because it tells me what kind of content you guys like to see. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.